Okay, welcome. A Nightmare on Elm Street. 40th anniversary filming locations will cover even more than last time. We gotta start here at Freddy. He's got his authentic glove right there. There's the original theatrical poster there. Original cover right there. If Nancy doesn't wake up screaming, she won't wake up at all. Are you ready? We hit every single spot we can. John Saxon, Ronnie Blakey, Heather Langenkamp, Amanda Weiss, Johnny Depp, Charles Flesher. This is gonna be good. Directed by Wes Craven. That authentic Freddy glove right there. Man, that's cool. Okay. All right, let's go. Happy 40th anniversary to A Nightmare on Elm Street. After Tina's initial dream sequence, we open up here to this embankment on the side of John Marshall High School, used in A Nightmare on Elm Street, 1984. Those girls were jump roping right there on this embankment, and you can notice this building really well. So when they first arrive at school, you see Depp's car pull up here. It almost looks like there's more of a hill to the road, but there's six infamous Elm Street trees right here. All six of these trees, one, two, three, four, five, six, can all be counted in the original Elm Street film 40 years ago. And they still look just like they did 40 years ago. It's wild. Worst nightmare I ever had. You wouldn't believe it. And when we see Tina, Johnny Depp, and Nancy walking this way on the way to school, pass by all these exact trees. Skip roping right here. I can't believe you can see that building still looking the exact same. Nothing around here has changed. Not the school, not the trees, not the sidewalk. And I, that building can be seen. Just to the right, those creepy little girls <laughs> skipping, skipping right here. They actually meet up right here before Nancy goes into school and Tina's talking to Nancy about her dream. We just parked over here, but you can see these two houses behind Nancy and Tina as they're talking. Let's get a closer look at those houses. They look the exact same as they did in the film. Actually, this one here to the left that that's pretty cool everyone has a bad dream once in a while it's no biggie so these houses seen it very well behind them when they're on the steps of John Marshall here there we go the school has not changed at all and they use John Marshall High School in pretty in pink good burger they use the back area for grease a lot of filming has gone down here, but most importantly in my mind, the exterior for A Nightmare on Elm Street. They were all filming right here. Coming up the sidewalk, and Johnny Depp runs up the steps and goes into the far left door. Can show a quick clip of that as well. I can't believe these doors have never changed. 40 years later, they've probably been repainted at some point, but it's insane. Depp runs right in that door at the beginning of the film, and then Nancy comes out of this door after burning herself on the pipe in the boiler room, and Lynn Shea, who plays the teacher, one of that's my favorite actress, Lynn Shea. Well, Jamie Lee Curtis, Lynn Shea. She lets her go home. Nancy comes out of this door, and then she stops right here and looks at the wound on her arm. There you go. John Marshall High School. A Nightmare on Elm Street, 1984. 40th anniversary. These two houses. 
these six distinct springwood trees. I mean, they're springwood trees to me because wherever I am, whatever film I'm covering, it's the town we're in, we're in Springwood. <laughs> so yeah, they all come walking by these trees before heading into school. And one more look over here at this awesome embankment where the girls were jump roping. And that's right after Tina's initial dream sequence. Jump roping over here. And we'll just walk up and get a uh, decent shot of that building that you see to the right of those girls skipping. I like to be thorough, especially when it's one of my favorite films. And I've already covered it, so I've got to make it better. Got to make it better than the first filming location tour. Little girls up here. Get a quick shot. This building has not changed. The roof is the exact same. Man, that's cool. All right. Let's push on. Not only are these doors just like they were in the film, these are the actual hand railings. Like, look at this. These have not been changed in like 40 years. Look at that, you can see the rust and everything on them, the rust and the wear. These are the actual handrails still here, 40 years later, the steps too. Pretty awesome. This is one of the coolest school locations ever. Can't believe those handrails, steps and the doors still the same. Okay. Night brings us here. And we have Johnny Depp at their laying camp. Tina in there. This is Tina's house, in Venice, at nighttime. Here at 620 Millwood. If you want to see it during the day, you can check out my other Elm Street locations video. looks the same. Pretty cool. They're all having a sleepover in there. And then uh, Rod Lane showed up in the backyard. So what's going on here? An orgy or something? Maybe a funeral, dickhead. Right after Tina falls asleep. utilize this alleyway down here, Electric Court, in her dream sequence. That's the first time we see Freddy be right behind Tina's house. When she goes into her dream, she basically ends up spilling out around here. Looking to her right, it's down here where we first see Freddy's shadow cast upon these doors. set of doors he cast his shadow upon and then he starts moving this way Tina sees him from this direction what's interesting is when his arms extend out this is the exact iron wall that he basically slides his glove upon at that this is it people don't know that that that's the wall Freddy, arm extended, arms extended. Creepy. <laughs> it's absolutely crazy. I think uh, 40 years have passed, and this alleyway looks so like it did in 1984. I mean, the only thing that's really changed is the fencing right here. These stairs were in the film. That door it was, it used to be like 
lattice, lattice works kind of. Now it's just green wood. But these doors haven't changed at all. Actually, it looks like <laughs> the locks are there. Oh, no, this one's changed. The one on the doors to the left is pretty uh, rusted. Wow. Same doors, though. It's interesting here. It's kind of like where he cast his shadow. You can see the electric cork pole. Even in this shot, this legendary shot where you see Robert Anglin casting his shadow. It's Freddy for the first time. There's the pole right there. The infamous electric court, Millwood court pole, right behind Tina's house. Freddy approaches Tina, and she starts running this way down the alley. <laughs> that establishing shot again. Freddy chasing Tina this way. Man, that's so cool. I love how the uh, the lighting is the same very similar. I mean, it's very blue in the movie, but it's great that they keep this lit at night. You hear lots of creepy noises here. I love that. Big kiss. That thing's been up there for a long time. Every time I've ever been here, this thing's been up there. But they have added a lot of stuff lately. Street, 1984. Freddy's Alley. Cool things on this door too. Interesting bells. Clam bake. Infamous doors. The infamous doors. A lot of interesting stuff up here. It's creepy. It's creepy. <laughs> it's kind of the angle you get here. Interestingly enough, this is the exact wall, if you didn't know. Listen to this. It's an iron wall that Freddy runs his club along. His arms are all extended. Right there. Court. Look at this. There's a mirror here now. Further assure you that this is the wall that he drags his knives across. See that? That's the dip right there in the wall. Now look at that. This has got a flashlight. So there's the dip right there. Proving this is definitely the wall you see 40 years ago in the film. Pretty cool. So he drags his knived hand, <laughs> knived glove across this exact wall. Cool. They were more like finger knives or something. Hey, I was just noticing up here it says, uh, Hippies use side door. It's written upside down. After chasing Tina back this way, his arms extended, chases Tina this way, back into her backyard, eventually, making it back up into her house where she meets her unfortunate demise. One more time. This is the site of the first death by Freddy. Freddy's first kill 40 years ago, right here. I did this myself. You see that? Freddy Alley. <laughs> that was Mr. Thrasher. This pole too. It's the same pole from four years ago. Let's hope they keep it up. 40th anniversary. It's bringing all of the light to the alley. The uh, angle of Tina's house like this in the film. creepy music as well. It's awesome. I love this location. Here in Venice. 
one of the most horrific scenes. Tina falls asleep. Tina. Tina. screen grab of the house here just figured I'd show what it looked like 40 years ago in the 1984 film obviously the yard has gone through a lot of changes but the house still has the green roof doorway and everything looks the same just a few minor changes but the property itself has changed a lot very similar to the way it was in the film doors a different color 1428 North Genesee Real life Elm Street. Cool, there's a play structure over there now. That was Nancy's bedroom up there. They did use Nancy's bedroom for filming 40 years ago. However, did no did not use any other parts of the house. These trees, obviously, this is the tree that Johnny Depp hides behind. He's watching her. She's uh, having her dream. She's instructed not to fall asleep. All these trees seen in Elm Street. And these magnificent trees as well. Very prominent in the first two films. Those are absolutely incredible. Those trees right there. Forty years later. Where uh, she's tussling with Freddy here on the lawn. And of course, some exterior scenes when uh, Johnny Depp's uh, climbing up into her room. And so she was literally right across the street from Johnny Depp. Like, he'd go up there, or she would talk to him out of her window, to his window, and we'll walk over to Glenn's house. Glenn Lance. Johnny Depp's first major Hollywood role. Right over here. Johnny Depp's. So she actually was talking window to window with him. Less foliage over there 40 years ago. You could get a clear shot over to his window. That was Johnny Depp's window up there. This interesting balcony piece. many changes made to this property and in fact only in the last year they just put this fence up in the last year and they've added some stuff added some little trees and stuff to the property this is it Glenn's house be cool Thompson, I'm sorry to wake you, but I, I've, I've never seen anything like this before in my life. You can notice the sidewalk is the exact same, all the cracks and everything. It comes to a tip here. Utilize both driveways. And Johnny Depp's unfortunate death scene. We'll go over that more later. Important to get a good shot of Glenn's house. over to Nancy's for a moment. Look at these crazy trees. These are wild. Trees of Springwood. Incredible. Been here so many times, never ceases to amaze me. Love it. Nancy's house. I like to call it Freddy's house. We'll film the scene from the TV version of Halloween. And they filmed additional scenes for it around 81, I believe. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis uh, comes down after taking a shower and they use the front door on the other side there. 
PJ Souls character shows up, thinking someone's tailing her. And when she's talking to Annie on the phone, she's actually up there in what was Nancy's room. That's funny because her name is Nancy Loomis. Ha! Interesting tie in. The Elm Street Halloween tie in. Of course, the murder houses from Halloween just up there with the murder house and the babysitter house and a couple of other houses up here where Loomis notices the station wagon right here on North Genesee. But to me, it's Freddy's house. Good shot. Nancy's house here. Just love those two trees. These ones. Awesome. But the best I can do, whistling. <laughs> so taken by these trees. Insane. Look at that. These crazy trees here. You still you see these houses across the street in the film as well. Especially this one between the two legendary trees. Yeah, those trees are just something else. You see these houses in the background. If you look careful enough in the film. Take another quick stroll by Clinton's house. Glenn's room. <laughs> Pretty cool. It's a 40th anniversary filming location tour. They're hitting everything from a nightmare on Elm Street. And we'll return here at night as well. We'll go over some of the night scenes here on Elm Street. Okay, so following morning, Nancy's heading to school right here, here in Venice, or Springwood. Now this building here, she passes by as she's walking to school. You see it very well in A Nightmare on Elm Street, 1984. See that Spanish rooftop there? All looks the same, however, they've been constructing this, so 40th anniversary update right here. This is what it looks like today. It's gonna have a new finish. So, looks a little different. Roof is the same though, and still that uh, the doorway that she walks right by. The recent changes in construction here at this spot, I don't think you can find this spot anymore. Where she's walking by that door would have been right about here. Maybe some things can still be matched up at this spot though. It's still worth coming to check it out, especially because of down here where Rod Lane gets arrested. But if you look at this, the address isn't even here anymore. It's 1622 Glendon, and the door here looks the same as you can see right there. And there's the window. It's not there anymore. That's the window right there behind her head. And she notices an officer with his eyes on her standing right over here by the tree. What's most incredible is that these trees right off Morningside Avenue have not changed at all. I mean, they've gotten big. Of course, they've changed a bit. They've gotten bigger, but you can still notice the shape is the same. Yeah, so that officer is just standing over here, ominously watching. We see Rod Lane talking to John Saxton. He goes, take it easy, son. Like your life depended on it. And eventually we see Rod Lane making a break for it up here. So he gets arrested right up here. I didn't do it, Nancy. 
Notice here in this shot, we're gonna match up that house behind him. And uh, it's a different color now, but the windows look the same. Notice that they moved that arrow sign actually over to the left. It was a little further over to the right there when it was brand new probably, or uh, closer to that time. But you can see they've moved it to the left side of that tree, but that house is still there. The windows look the same. The hedges have gotten a bit bigger as I approach closer. So yeah, cop heads them off right there and Rod starts running back this direction. And you can notice that the arrow sign used to be moved over a little bit. Okay, I got him. On the ground. Now. Come on, get that. Oh, wow. Look at this. A switch play. It looked nice, fresh, and new in the film. You can make out the whole arrow in the film. Now it's all bent. Now it's all mangled. What once was a beautiful arrow sign in a nightmare on Elm Street 40 years later is still here. Just a little mangled. Just leave it there. 40 years later, it's still here. Want to see it here. In another 10 years and another 20 years. But this is it. This is where Rod Lane was arrested. Brought to the station. Fascinating to stand here. One of my favorite horror movies of all time. Always will be. That arrow signs, mind blower. As well as these trees. Officer would have been standing right here by the tree. The building you see here is now abandoned. This creepy abandoned building is actually where they filmed all of Freddy's boiler room scenes. Nancy burning herself on the pipe at school. Tina's, Tina's scene, the beginning. Anytime you see Freddy appear in the boiler room, it was filmed here, in the basement. Wow, this is pretty cool. I wish we could get in there. To my knowledge, only one person has ever got gotten into that boiler room. You know, the asbestos is really bad, especially con considering it's condemned and abandoned. But it was within these walls, in the basement. Those legendary boiler room scenes took place. Really creepy. Who are you? Hard to say where exactly the basement that the boiler room was but I've never come here so this is pretty cool it was also used as the prison filmed on the roof in American History X but we're talking 40th anniversary of a nightmare on Elm Street so you get an abandoned building in this filming location tour 40 years ago Freddy in the boiler room down there Probably right down there. Can't see through any openings or anything. But that sacred boiler room, where all those scenes were filmed, is right in here. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Smell a berry. Pungent odor. Let's put the camera right in there. It's probably right down there. In a room, in this room, or in a room very similar. It's where they would have had Freddy's boiler room scenes filmed. Very creepy. Hear that water dripping? Just imagine Freddy right there. Ready. Best of what we can get of the interior. shots of this. That's pretty cool. Can't say that that is the room 
where that actual boiler room scene was. I'm not gonna attest to that, but that very well could have been it. That room is down in the basement somewhere. That was pretty creepy. Look at this place. How's this for an abandoned location? Things boarded up. Windows are spray painted and smashed out. Actually, see a lot of prison cells up there. You can actually see the prison cells. Danger, keep out asbestos sign right there. Got some nice palm trees over here. windows though still look at the place so creepy it says eager up there there you go where they filmed all of freddy's boiler room scenes right here that brings us back here to nancy's house at night 1428 genesee or elm street more creepy and ominous at night. Love it. Later in the film, see the alleyway again, and she's, Nancy is coming by these exact steps. See that door too? So cool. She comes this way. And she goes to her left, goes down the alley. As I've explained before, she makes you think that she's eventually looking through like a door here. But you can actually see these garage doors behind her to her left when she's staring through like a makeshift door they probably would have set up over here in that case. And she opens the door, she goes through and she's at the police station. Could use one more light here in this alley. <laughs> this full moon. Full moon, 40th anniversary. Nightmare on Elm Street. So yeah, these garages seen in the film. in her dream. Previously. You get serious, creepy Springwood vibes. Serious nightmare vibes. Look at this hand. than I would if, I, if this was just a regular filming locations tour of uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, which you can see on my channel. You would, uh, interesting, it's like a medicine cabinet. It wouldn't be so in-depth showing you kinds of things in this alleyway. The Freddy Alley. It's, uh, where they filmed the exterior of the cop station. 
right after the death of Tina, we see John Saxon and his deputy rush up these steps. We see them go right by this. The unique architecture of this library. Awesome. And another scene you also see Johnny Depp and Heather Langenkamp run by when they come to make sure Rod is okay before Rod unfortunately meets his demise. I've matched this spot up before so I'll show a quick screen grab of them running by this exact piece of architecture right here. Father abandoned 10 years ago, mother's in Vegas with a boyfriend, we're trying to reach her now. Of course, the embankment here where Nancy walked up during her dream when Glenn was supposed to be watching her. And he passes out. This is the exact window she walked up to. Looked at Rod asleep. And Freddy comes in. Still have the bars on the window. Pretty cool. Of course. Rod meets his demise in there. It's pretty amazing. Glad it's uh, nice and lit up at night. Do what Nancy did. Walk up to the window. The window with the bars. So cool. along this wall. Glenn, are you there? I'm here. Freddy, right here. Freddy, 40 years ago, Robert Englund, filmed right here on Santa Monica Boulevard. Cool. This is the first time anybody's ever covered it at night. That's what you get on the Mr. Thrasher show. Happy 40th anniversary to this film. Take another look. Beautiful. I'm here. <laughs> Always so impressive. Look at this architecture here. It's incredible. So 40 years ago, Robert England, right here. Incredible. into that doorway right there. Be cool. <clears throat> First time anybody's covered this at night. Johnny Depp rushed up these stairs. John Saxon. Incredible. Kalanga Branch Public Library. Santa Monica Boulevard. Used in A Nightmare on Elm Street 40 years ago. It's incredible. So now we're over here, North Evergreen Cemetery in East Los Angeles. And they use this cemetery for A Nightmare on Elm Street, A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, The Dream Warriors, and 4, The Dream Master. Also filmed uh, scenes from Mask here. Rocky Dennis's final resting place would have been here from the film as well as uh, stuff from Candyman 3. But first, we're gonna go and see where they had Rod Lane's funeral. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. God be with this young Okay, so over here would have been where they had Rod Lane's funeral. Rod Lane's funeral is over here. 
All this you can see in the shot. So I'll show a clip of it, but you're gonna notice that this stone was in Nightmare on Elm Street. This extremely creepy stone. Wow. You notice that, look at that. There it is. More decayed than it was in the film. So they had his funeral over here. Get that stone in the shot. Most of these stones actually, but the guy conducting the funeral would have been just to the left of this tree really. So they would have had Rod's casket here and they were all sitting over here. Now, I'm not sure if these stones were, oh, I mean, they had to have been there at the time. So I'm not sure what they did. Uh... But they were all sitting right here, casket right here. So we'll show some matchups or clips for what these stones looked like back when the movie was actually filmed but this one here is obviously the most notorious one creeps people out and you get a good shot of that in the film wow look at this first time walking right up to it this is what it looks like 40 years later it's astounding here's the full stone here Definitely creepy. And just gonna show this still from Rod's funeral as well. Show where the casket was set up just to the left of the tree. Those stones must have been here right behind the gathering here. And there's that stone. Here's that really creepy one, which is easier to show in a still because it's really, really quick shot of it in the film. This is when it was fully formed. Now it's been chipped away. Looks a lot creepier now. When they're showing it from a distance, you get this cross stone here. And that one. It's kind of filming this direction. Screen grab here from the film. Notice that the priest and the casket are set up just, just to the left of that tree that's behind him there. And then the tree that's behind that. You see that cross stone there to the left. We got that stone, that really creepy one. This one right here, you can see, right by uh, Nancy's mother. Another look at this. I love this. So creepy. So, this stone makes a very visible appearance in the film. Good look over the whole area. He who lives by the sword shall die by the sword. So little has actually changed in 40 straight years. Again, this stone, that one, that one. This epic legendary building. So cool. She's sitting on the steps right here. And her mom comes to talk to her. Now, the last time I did my Elm Street locations, there's gonna be a lot more on this today, but the actual water damage seen in the film can be seen in my other video. It looks like they've actually fixed it. They painted the steps green. I don't like that, I don't like that. That water damage, they just replaced the rails too, or painted them, but that water damage is gone now. You can see where it was. Nancy's sitting right here. So, update on the steps Nancy was sitting on. They've been painted. Dang. Time to go, honey. Still, pretty epic. Building itself has not changed at all. I can't believe that they waited for 40 years before replacing these stairs. Well, not replacing the stairs, but painting them, fixing them up still see where the water damage was. If you want to see it looking exact way it did 40 years ago, check out my other A Nightmare on Elm Street filming locations tour and you'll see, you'll also see me sitting on the steps. And a scene which took place over here where you see John Saxon approaching up this road here. And you notice all those exact palm trees. 40 years later, this row of palm trees still looks the same. You notice uh, this 
big monument here as well behind John Saxon. Let's get a good shot of this whole area. Love John Saxon. You're still loose, you know. You're saying somebody else killed Tina. Always blows my mind to see that all these palm trees are still the exact same. This monument. So, John Saxon filming right here. He approaches this way and Nancy's getting into the car, which would have been just over here in front of the Coulter McReynolds stone. And so he talks to her mother over here. And you get a pretty clear shot of that stone right there. And he walks up to the car here. But he's burned. And he wears a weird hat. And when, uh, John Saxon's talking to Ronnie Blakey and Nancy here. The station wagon was parked right here. The car was parked right here. And even as Saxon's talking to her, she's telling her she's gonna get her some help. You can see that stone right through the window. John Saxon. John Saxon approaches after having his cigarette over here. It's beautiful palm trees where Nancy was sitting on the steps, the now painted over steps. Ah, not a great way to commemorate 40 years of this film, painting over something from the film, but still cool, still cool. And over, over here, these stones, most importantly, this Coulter McReynolds stone. Cool. This building's not been touched up at all. Incredible. All the funerals for A Nightmare on Elm Street 3 were just over here. See that monument in there? All over here. Basically this whole area and that tree utilized for Elm Street 3. With this being the background. Whenever I get nervous, I eat. And if you can't do that, you sleep. Brings us over here to Venice Beach, Marina del Rey, in the Venice Canals. And you should recognize this because this palm tree is actually seen in A Nightmare on Elm Street 40 years ago. Look at that big beauty. And it's just up here where Johnny Depp and Heather Langenkamp are talking about booby traps and Johnny Depp pulls out that delicious burger. Right here. Did you ever read about the Balinese way of dreaming? Got some beautiful ducks here. Making their way underneath the bridge. So we'll walk up onto the bridge. Didn't bring a hamburger with me. I leave that tree tree just makes it wait until it was a little bit cooler to come to this spot and Venice Beach gets hot let's walk right up on the bridge shall we go right to the spot where Depp pulled out that hamburger Glenn Glenn and Nancy right here this is about the spot right here she had the book of booby traps so this would have been their POV right here Depp with the hamburger. A beautiful, legendary shot. You won't wake up to tell what happens. <sighs> Great. Maybe I should have brought a hamburger. It's been done before, so. <laughs> Very cool to stand here, though. Beautiful evening here on the Venice Canals. Here on the 40th anniversary year of A Nightmare on Elm Street, 1984. Here we are in 2024. Doesn't look like this has been touched up either. It's pretty crazy. This is right where they were standing right here. Proud to be here. Another improvised anti fight. Yeah, what was the name of the book? Booby Traps. Other improvised anti personnel devices. Other improvised anti personnel devices. Anti personnel devices. That was quite the book. 
Johnny Depp, Heather Lang. History. Slasher film history. Nancy's back here, up in the room which they did use to film. The rest of the house was a sound stage for the interior, but she's talking to Johnny Depp from over there. That lit up window, which was Johnny Depp's window, the balcony. She's telling him not to fall asleep. He's wondering who, who'd want to kill me. Why would anybody want to kill me? Don't ask. Just give me some help. Nancy starts annoying Glenn's father, who disconnects the phone, and she can't keep him from falling asleep. Unfortunately, most horrific scene in the entire movie, even worse than Tina's death, is the death of Glenn. Spoiler, I don't think it's a spoiler. See, this movie's been out 40 years, so if you've not seen it, just telling you about it won't spoil it, but Johnny Depp, his first ever Hollywood role, meets his demise up there. This lit up room was his. At the stroke of midnight, Freddy sucked him into the bed. Even 40 years later, the sidewalks outside of Glenn's house. Glenn Lance, the Lance residence. One thing that's changed now is the yard, and that's new in the past six months, but maybe the past six to eight months, the sidewalk's still the same. I'm glad they didn't change that. So that's the same cracks. So you see John Saxon approach. The ambulance would have been in this driveway. Don't need an ambulance. Need a mop. So Nancy puts her mom to bed. And then tells her father that She's gonna go get the guy who did it. <laughs> I want you to be there to arrest him when I bring him out, okay? <laughs> it all sounds like craziness to her father, played by John Saxon. So he's still over at Glenn's taking care of stuff. Meanwhile, Nancy puts that book to good use and sets all the booby traps for Freddy. Of course, uh, at the end of the film, <laughs> they pulled up right here, and her mother was at the door. <laughs> and then the top, the Freddy top comes on. <laughs> Glenn's like, I'm not doing anything. And they pull off, and she's waving. She's waving at the door, and then she gets sucked into the door there. And then you just look over here, those girls were skipping right here. Thanks again, everybody. Please like, please subscribe. If you're new here, subscribe and let you know when a new episode goes up. Never know what you may be missing here on the Mr. Thrash Show. Happy 40th anniversary to a Wes Craven classic. And Nightmare on Elm Street, Robert Englund, Heather Langenkamp, one of my favorite horror films, one of my favorite films of all time. What an honor to go in depth, all for your enjoyment. Thanks again, everybody. Check out my Filming Locations playlist. Much to see and much to come on the Mr. Thrash Show.